Some of our Club 32 members are also nascent servant leaders who feel how giving to others empowers them toward their personal goals. While awakening to the real needs that exist in most of the developing world. During our annual retreat in 2014, one of the Club 32 members took us through her story of volunteering with a STARS NGO in Ghana called Afri Kids.9 My niece Alia, who had just finished medical school, visited local hospitals where she saw how the lack of proper equipment and facilities translated into unmet surgical needs. She described the experience of attempting to teach children about science in an impoverished Ghanaian village during the fall of 2013. Alia had planned to teach them about the digestive system. I asked them what they had for breakfast and they all stared at me, she said. The children wanted to learn, but they had walked for miles without having eaten breakfast and could not pay attention. She saw the irony. Without nutrition it was ridiculous to try to teach the children anything about nutrition. The entire experience made her more determined to become a global surgeon and provide safe, affordable surgery and anesthesia care to people in low-income regions. Being a servant leader isn't easy. And it doesn't suit everyone. As Greenleaf suggests. We are all sitting somewhere on the scale between the extremes of servant first and leader first if you honestly tend toward leader first. I urge you to surround yourself with people who will help support and develop your servant first. Mindset. Will servant leaders help us overcome our immense global challenges such as poverty, conflict, and natural resource depletion? I believe they will. And it is my vision, my purpose in life, to serve such servant leaders, to help them embrace their own purposes in life to embrace their own power and lead in service of their own communities.